Welcome to Fiscal Integrity Group, your ticket to bookkeeping greatness. Welcome to Bookkeeping Fundamentals. It's Sandy Holst here again with another knowledge nugget called Be Efficient. Now, we have two types of these uh, knowledge nuggets or webinars. The Bookkeeping Fundamentals, here we're talking about processes, general bookkeeping processes. But we also have a very long-winded webinar that's just over an hour long when it comes to program technology and those processes. So here's the short version of it when it comes to bookkeeping. And we have another webinar that gets uh, into the program itself and how you can be um, more efficient in, with your postings. So for now, we're going to talk about just being efficient with your bookkeeping processes. And the first thing I want you to think about is the business owner. They get into business to make money. So in essence, time is money and the faster we get our bookkeeping into maintenance stage each month the more others are able to use these numbers when we had our bookkeeping business a few years ago we had a tagline and it said something like this if you don't know your numbers you can't grow your numbers so business owners need to see their numbers in order to grow their business so what's happening in the field right now is far too often we see the books months and months behind this is so risky for a business owner not seeing if the company is in trouble or not. So you having your processes organized in a simple manner is more efficient than processes that are what we call the long way around. If you take hours to do something, then your processes are not as efficient as they could be. So you do need to understand many people could be waiting for these numbers as well. Most importantly, the business owner, but also his or her support circle. So that could be the accountant, the business coach, possibly the bank if the business owner is looking to get a line of credit, um, but also a corporate lawyer. Therefore, efficiency is just as important as accuracy. In this knowledge nugget, I am going to go a little bit deeper into why you need to be efficient. I'm also going to talk about some tips and tricks about bookkeeping basics so you can be as efficient as possible. And I want to show you how efficiency is also equaling to accountability. And I would be remiss if I don't go through the ramifications of not being efficient. I think you do need to know that. Bookkeeping basics. First and foremost, it is so important you use the wonderful technology at our fingertips that we have today and use it the most useful way. It's still happening. Very often I see bookkeepers doing nothing but journal entries in these new wonderful accounting programs and they're skipping all the other functions that are provided for us to efficiently bookkeep. In my opinion, journal entries are my last resort. I use them when I can't use the other functions or for stuff like posting and year-end adjusting entries from the accountant. Otherwise, I'm minimal use. Bookkeeping is about telling the story of the business. It is a book with multiple chapters. So think of your general ledger and you have all kinds of capabilities there to take a look at the story. When a bookkeeper details the story properly, then the business owners and his or her professional team can help plan to grow the company. So what I'm doing here is also general good bookkeeping practices for the real world. Now, by the way, if you are a freelance bookkeeper or you plan to be one, then you most certainly know or will know that time is money and the faster you get the work done, the higher your profit margin will be. So this series is set up to show you how we can become efficient, keep to the highest levels of accuracy, and become proactive bookkeepers so time was on our side or is on our side for a profitable outcome and also a profitable outcome for the business owner. Let's run through some general bookkeeping practices for efficiency. Number one, know how your debits and credits work. Knowing these cold and in your sleep sets you up to being efficient when it comes to knowing where to post them in the first place. You shouldn't have to think too long about posting something in. These are the foundations of bookkeeping and you are more valuable being an expert on how these work. 
And I've had many new self-taught bookkeepers recently ask me why they need to know debits and credits um, if the accounting program does it for them. Well, honestly, the accounting program really doesn't do it for them. This is most certainly a question that would have never come up a few decades ago. Number two, tie everything back to the paperwork. A bookkeeper is the person that works the details, and an accountant is the person that works with the end result of these details. Therefore, you need to defend your postings when it comes to how you came to the numbers you posted in. Your work always comes from the paperwork that has been given to you. The statements, the receipts, supplier invoices, client or customer invoices, all the details. Government still wants to see the paperwork. Whether you have it in the original form or scanned in, this is what they use to perform an audit. They are not exactly happy campers when you can't produce the paperwork. Number three, keep your posting simple. Don't have cryptic processes that it's very difficult to follow later on, especially for somebody else. I'm a fan of mirroring statements. Bank statements, credit card statements, line of credit statements posted into my accounting program can be easily reviewed as how you would see them on the bank statement. Therefore, I rarely bunch deposits, checks, or online payments just because they're going into the same accounts. Number four, detail your descriptions and tell the story. So most accounting programs out in the world today allow a description or memo field to explain what the activity is. This is an amazing feature for future references. I can't remember what I did yesterday, much less a few months into the future. So make things easy on yourself and tell the story while you're posting the original entry. Number five, the business owner should have the ability to see their statements in a timely manner. With today's technology, the bank and credit card statements can be downloaded at any given time. Therefore, they can be reconciled not only throughout the month, but as fast as a few days after the month end. So what will happen here is if you're a freelance bookkeeper, it'll depend on the contract that you've set up with your client. That'll determine when you're reconciling and producing statements. Also, sometimes supplier invoices may still be sent via mail. Therefore, it is still most likely the norm to allow at least three to four weeks to close off a month. It all depends on the industry and the bookkeeping process for that particular company. Having said this, and most unfortunately, I see companies that are months and months behind in the books. The reasons for these need to be addressed because it is at the risk of the company's survival if they're not. Number six, know how to read financial statements. Many small business owners are getting into business because they're excellent at selling a product or a service, but they really don't know the financial side of being in business. I don't know how many times I've had to explain how a financial statement works to a client, more than just a few. So this is a very valuable trait for a bookkeeper to have. Number seven, Take the time to review your work. If I asked bookkeepers how often they looked at their general ledger, I would get various answers from always looking at it to never looking at it. How do you know if your postings are accurate if you don't double check your work? We are all human, therefore we all make mistakes, and it's okay to make mistakes as a bookkeeper, but it is not okay if you don't take the time to search out these mistakes. Number eight. Take control of the bookkeeping processes. Bookkeeping isn't only sending out customer invoices and paying the bills. A bookkeeper is responsible for all accounts on the chart of account listings. So dive into each one when you close out a month and is everything working as planned? You do need to make sure all your reports are managed properly, such as receivables and payables. Do you need to take control of collecting the receivables? Maybe. That is a yes, if there is no one else to do so. Now, if you're a freelance bookkeeper, that may be a little different depending on the contract that you've signed when it comes to your client. So that's something to think about when it comes to uh, offering to do collections or not. Number nine, your processes shouldn't be the long way around. 
What I mean by this is, if you find it is taking forever to work something out, then there has to be a better way. Today's technology allows for shorter, more efficient processes in the program. You don't always have to go to Excel and have all kinds of multiple spreadsheets. Here's an example. I once was hired on to clean up a set of books. When I first looked at the file, I couldn't believe my eyes when I saw the chart of accounts. It was over 10 pages long, well over a hundred income accounts. Now, I do know what the bookkeeper was trying to do, but she made it very difficult on herself. There was a much shorter and simpler route to go. All this meant was that she wasn't open to taking the time to learn how to simplify her bookkeeping. Number 10. Do you have multiple jobs? So what stops you from being efficient? And I bet you always find the bookkeeping when you have too many things on your plate, it's the first to be put aside. But it shouldn't be. So learn to step up and communicate with the business owner that it is important that the bookkeeping should be first priority, not the last. This is very common when one person is the office administrator and the bookkeeper. Very common indeed, and the business owner underestimates the time it takes to bookkeep properly. So here I would suggest to muster up the confidence, go tell the business owner it is only in their best interest to allow time to keep the books current. Moving on to efficiency equals accountability. It really does come down to accuracy. If you're efficient in your postings, then it's helping you become accountable to your processes. This way, the business owner is making solid, informed decisions to grow their business. Then the accountant is making solid, informed decisions in regards to tax planning. Then if that inevitable auditor docks at the door, you are ready for them. Therefore, I do believe efficiency does equal accountability. I think it's important that we address the ramifications of not being efficient. And at this point, when you don't have an efficient process, it's going downhill for not only the business owner, but the bookkeeper as well. So let's start off with the business owner. They are really looking to see where they stand, especially if there's no money in the bank account. This means a stressed out business owner, and then that means a stressed out and frustrated bookkeeper. Because I'm sure sometimes you're just looking for paperwork and answers and they're not coming your way fast enough. But as I said in the beginning, the business owner needs to know their numbers or they can't grow their business. And for them, it's all about making money. And that is how you grow your business. When it comes to the accountant, they can't tax plan in advance if they don't see the numbers a few times throughout the year. By leaving it to the end, it could mean a hefty tax bill and if it's late penalties and interest. And that's when we come to the government Filing the corporate taxes late could mean money not spent well. And that's exactly what penalties and our interest are. It's money out of the pocket that shouldn't have to be out of the pocket. When it comes to real, re, uh, sorry, retail sales tax remittances, um, this is a big one that I've seen a lot in Canada and had to deal with. If your bookkeeping months are not closed off by the time the remittances are due, then you are sort of guessing or estimating what you're filing to the government rather than what you should be filing. So once you do catch up, you now have differences from what you filed originally to what you should have filed. And I've had to deal with these and reconcile this type of issue on many occasions. Now, I'm sure there are more numerous other ramifications to the business if you are not current or efficient with your bookkeeping, but I'm going to keep to these five major points for now. I think it's safe to say that efficiency does make sense. Stay organized by keeping your system simple. Ensure you can defend your postings back to the paperwork because that keeps you safe in an audit as well. Be accountable for accuracy. If you don't know something, ask. There's plenty of people to ask in your world, and if not, send me an email. Continue to learn more efficient processes because that makes you valuable, and if you're a freelance bookkeeper, that increases your profit margin. So that's all for now for this Knowledge Nugget. Until next time, you know what? Enjoy your bookkeeping. Fiscal Integrity Group, your home for the advancement of bookkeeping and bookkeepers. 